Let's talk about something that should give every pro brewer nightmares, yet I see it constantly, exploding cans. You know the photos, social media posts full of kitchens redecorated with fruited smoothie sours. Foam and fruit everywhere. But here's the kicker. Even more dangerous are the brewers out there pushing non-alcoholic beers out the door without pasteurization. That's not just messy, that's a food safety time bomb waiting to happen. And those brewers risk making people sick and getting sued. Now, if you're a brewer, you've heard the dogma. You've been told that pasteurization is a cardinal sin, a dirty word that's only for the big macro breweries, that it's a blunt instrument that destroys flavor and any real craft brewery wouldn't dare touch it. You've been led to believe that it's a compromise, a betrayal of the whole craft ethos. Well, I'm here to tell you that that's a dangerous myth that could be killing your brewery. Today in Quality Focus Pro Brewers, we're pulling back the curtain on the one dirty word that can actually save craft beer, protect your customers and secure your brand's future. We're talking about pasteurization and I'm going to show you why it's not just a compromise, it's a critical weapon for making beer that's not just safe and shelf stable, but award winning. Let's get brewing. G'day brewers, my name is Hendo and I am a pro brewer coach from the Rockstar Brewer Academy. I help professional brewers all over the world implement quality systems they need to brew amazing world-class beer. Let's be real for a second. The fear around pasteurization in the craft beer industry is huge and it didn't come from nowhere. For decades, the story was simple. Big beer pasteurizes, craft beer doesn't. The pioneers of our industry built their brands on being the exact opposite of those bland, fizzy lagers. They championed fresh, living beer without preservatives. Pasteurization was the villain in that story, a tool used to kill beer so that it could sit on a shelf for a year, stripping it of all of its character. This mindset is baked into the craft identity. We're all about authenticity and the brewer's art. The thought of heating our precious liquid feels, well, wrong. It feels like we're cheating. This romance around a living product that has to be kept cold and drunk fresh, it speaks to a purity that we all got into this brewing business to create. And because of that, brewers are terrified. They're scared of the label. They're scared that if they don't admit to pasteurizing, their beers will be called corporate sellouts and their customers will walk away. But here's the hard truth. That fear comes with a massive cost. Every time a batch of beer leaves your brewery, you're basically crossing your fingers and hoping for the best. Will it stay cold? Will some liquor store owner leave it sitting in a warm back room or on a floor stack? Is that fruited sour going to turn into a bomb? This is a frustrating and unsustainable way to run a brewery and that anxiety is holding you back and it's time to face it. It's time to talk about the ticking time bomb in your cold room. See, this fear forces brewers to play Russian roulette with their beer. They're banking on a perfect cold chain and perfect customer behavior to avoid a disaster. But here's the reality check. The disaster is happening more and more. So let's bust some of the myths that brewers tell themselves to sleep at night. Myth number one, my sanitation is perfect. I don't need to worry about spoilage. Hey, look, I applaud your commitment to a clean brewery. A brewer's best friend is the ISO and the PAA, but no brewery is a sterile lab, period. End of discussion. Spoilage bugs are sneaky and they can hide where your CRP cycle can't reach. They can ride in on fruit purees or adjuncts, and once they're in the can, they'll create haze, off flavors, and kill your brand's reputation. Pasteurization isn't a band-aid for sloppy work. It's the final kill step that guarantees that the flavor you work so hard for is the flavor that the customer gets. Principles around beer quality aren't just about making a beer that's shelf stable. You're making a beer that's fundamentally better, and to help you put all this into practice, I've created a free five-step pro brewer guide that you can download right now. It boils all this down into an actual checklist to help you make awesome beer that you're truly proud of. Comment with the word guide below or head to rockstarbrewer.com forward slash guide and I'll send it right over to you. So myth number two is exploding cans are just a problem for brewers making those crazy fruit smoothie sludge bombs. Yeah, look, it's true. Those heavily fruited beers are a huge risk. And you're adding a ton of unfermentable sugars, which basically are a feast for any yeast that are left in the can. But this isn't just about the fruit. Let's talk about the boogeyman that haunts every single modern IPA brewer, hop creep. Hop creep is what happens when enzymes in your hops break down complex sugars into simple fermentable ones after your beer has finished primary fermentation. 
you've got live yeast in your unfiltered beer and that's going to wind up in your can. And if you do that, it'll start a slow, sneaky re-fermentation right there in the can. This beer might be perfect when it leaves the brewery, but weeks later, it's an overcarbonated, gushing mess. And even worse, it can become a diacetyl bomb, that buttery flavour that's an instant drain poured and has no place in an IPA. This can happen to your flagship hazy IPA just as easily as it can happen to a fruited sour. And that also leads to the most dangerous myth of all, Myth number three, it's just beer, it's not going to seriously hurt anyone. For most of history, that was true. Alcohol, low pH and hops made beer incredibly safe. But the game has changed. The non-alcoholic and low alk beer market is absolutely exploding right now, and it's projected to hit nearly $35 billion by 2033. Here's the problem though. Take away the alcohol and you take away one of the main pillars of preservation. A beer that's less than 3% ABV, 8 IBUs, and a pH of around 4 or above is far more vulnerable to spoilage, including those from pathogens. And for these beers, pasteurisation isn't a choice, it's an essential food safety step. Trying to compete in the NA space without a plan for microbial stability is not just bad business, it's straight up irresponsible. Let's deconstruct the dirty word, pasteurisation, and talk a little bit about how it works. So... We know the risks. Exploding cans and unsafe low alk beers are real. Now let's demystify the solution. When you hear pasteurization, you probably imagine boiling beer and cooking off all those beautiful hop aromas. But that's the biggest misconception out there. Let's get this straight. Pasteurization is not sterilization. You are not boiling your beer. Pasteurization is a very precise controlled heat treatment designed to knock back the population of spoilage microbes so they can't cause any problems. It'll also denature the enzyme that causes hop creep. The key concept here is the pasteurization unit or PU. Think of a PU as a dose of heat. One PU equals holding the beer at 60 degrees Celsius or 140 Fahrenheit for one minute. The goal is to hit the target PU level needed to kill the bad guys and not one PU more. It's a scalpel, not a sledgehammer. Modern technology lets you dial in this with incredible precision. In fact, some studies show a controlled pasteurization can even improve a beer's stability against oxygen, making it taste better for longer. So how do brewers actually do this? The tools, well, the good news is the tools are more accessible than ever. You've got tunnel pasteurization, where cans move through a machine that sprays them with hot water and then cools them down again. They're big, expensive, and noisy, but smaller models are starting to appear out there in the market. And then there's flash pasteurization, where the beer is heated and cooled in line before packaging, usually on the transfer on the way to the bright tank. It's super efficient with regards to energy and it's really gentle on the beer, but it needs a completely sterile filling line and everything else downstream needs to be 100% aseptic, which is a challenge in and to itself. I've got several members of the Rockstar Brewer Academy who are using a real game changer for craft brewers, and that's batch pasteurization. This is perfect for small scale brewers, and it's pretty easy and cheap to implement. Think of it as a series of water vessels with different set temperatures. You can load a tray of cans in, preheat, transfer to your hot vessel, and hold it at the target temp until you hit your required PUs and then you transfer it to a recovery vessel to cool it down and transfer that heat back over to the preheat vessel, making the whole process really energy efficient. You can even DIY these three tub systems. Now, does this mean that every brewery can afford this tomorrow or can implement this tomorrow? Of course not. It's an investment you have to plan for, but it puts microbial stability in reach for more brewers than ever before. It's an achievable goal, not some multi-million dollar fantasy. Now, this is a quick overview around your options regarding pasteurization. I know weighing the pros and cons of this equipment is a huge decision, but you've got to make sure that your beer is top-notch before you go down this path. To help you dive deeper into a proven brewery quality system, I've put together a free crash course that walks you through exactly how to create a system in just 60 days. Comment crash course below or head to rockstarbrewer.com forward slash crash course to check it out. Now, here's the thing we really need to talk about. If you're going to implement pasteurization in your brewery, you've got to play by a new playbook. And that means you've got to brew for pasteurization. So once you see the need, you can't just run your current recipes through a pasteurizer and hope for the best. 
To master this, you've got to brew for pasteurization. This is where the Rockstar Brewers separate themselves. Here's the principles. The first thing you've got to do is you've got to fight dissolved oxygen like your life depends on it. Because it does. Dissolved oxygen is always the enemy, but when you add heat, it's public enemy number one. Heat supercharges oxidation, creating those wet cardboard flavors, sherry notes, and diastole we all hate. This means you have to absolutely be militant about your processes. Perfect purges, ultra low DO packaging. Honestly, brewing for pasteurization forces you to tighten up your whole operation, which makes for better beer all round, period. The second thing is you've got to plan for flavor and aroma. Let's be real, heat can affect the most delicate hop aromas? Yeah, sure but knowing this lets you plan for it. This is where the art comes back in. If you know that you might lose a little bit off the top, you can increase your dry hop by 20 or 25%. You can even select hops that are known to be more robust, or you can use some of the more novel hop aroma products like Tetra, for example, and that's designed to lock in foam stability because that'll be affected by pasteurization too. You're not just accepting flavor loss, you're intelligently designing your recipe to deliver the exact profile you want after stabilization. It's just another variable to master, just like your brewing water chemistry. The third thing is you need to control what you can control. This is about being proactive. We talked about diastole from the hop creek. Well, you can head that off at the pass. Many brewers now use ALDC enzyme, and it basically prevents the chemical reaction that creates diastole. By adding it at yeast pitch, you remove the risk of that diastole spike from pasteurization or oxidation. It's another tool for the modern brewer. You need to combine these principles and you're not just making a beer that's ready for pasteurization, you're making a beer that's fundamentally better. So what happens when you embrace the science and invest in your process? The payoff is a total transformation of your business and your peace of mind. First of all, you're gonna unlock new markets. That massive non-alcoholic beer sector, it's no longer a minefield. You can confidently create safe, delicious non-alc beers. Those heavily fruited sours sell like crazy but give you nightmares? Now you can make them without fearing can grenades. Pasteurization is your passport to innovate safely in the fastest growing parts of the market. Second, you can build a rock solid brand on consistency. Think about it. Imagine shipping your IPA across the country in the middle of summer and knowing with 100% confidence it'll taste exactly how you intended three months later. That's the power of shelf stability. It builds immense trust with your drinkers. When a customer knows your beer will be perfect every single time, they'll become a customer for life and they will keep putting money in your bank account. Consistency is the hallmark of every single successful brewery that I've ever worked with. And finally, you get rid of the anxiety. No more sleepless nights worrying about a product recall that could bankrupt you. No more dreading seeing pictures of your exploded cans on social media. You take back control. You guarantee the quality and safety of your product. That peace of mind is priceless. It lets you stop worrying and focus on what you do best, brewing incredible beer. Now I know this is a huge topic and it challenges a lot of the dogma we've been fed. So I wanna hear from you. Drop a comment below. Are you a brewer wrestling with this? Are you a beer lover who's had a can go off on you? Let me know your story in the comments below. I read every single comment. And if you're getting value from this, do me a solid and hit that like button and subscribe to this channel. It tells the platform to share this with more brewers who need to hear this message, and it helps the channel out a ton. For too long, pasteurization has been treated like a shameful secret, but that's a dangerously outdated myth. It's not the enemy, it's a precise scientific tool. It stops cans from exploding, it prevents hop creek from ruining your IPAs, and it's the key to safely unlocking the non-alcoholic beer market. More than anything, it's a tool for professionalism. It allows rockstar brewers to guarantee the quality and consistency of their beer, building a stronger brand and a more sustainable business. It's time to shed the stigma and see pasteurization for what it really is. Not a compromise, but a critical weapon for any brewery that wants to thrive. So go out there, brew safe, brew smart, and don't be afraid to use all the tools at your disposal so you can make your beer better. Hey, if you like this video, I reckon you should check out this one next. Thanks heaps for tuning into this episode of Quality Focus Pro Brewers, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.